Astronomers just detected what appears to be a second object traveling alongside 3I slash Atlas. Evidence the interstellar visitor may have split apart near Mars. In July 2025, data from the Minor Planet Center showed a fragment emerging only 1.4 astronomical units from the Red Planet. An event so rare in deep space, it's only been seen before with comets like Shoemaker-Levy 9, which shattered before striking Jupiter. NASA teams are now racing to assess if this split could alter Atlas's trajectory or even pose risks to Mars-bound missions. But what's driving this sudden breakup? And is this second object really just a natural fragment or something never seen before? Late in the night, just as July 25 was drawing to a close, a series of flagged data points began lighting up the Minor Planet Center's monitoring dashboard. The Zwicky Transient Facility, running automated sky surveys from Palomar Observatory, had swept past the coordinates of 3I slash Atlas and picked up something odd, a faint smudge, offset by a handful of arc seconds from the known track. Within minutes, analysts on the MPC's night shift were comparing astrometric logs checking timestamps, and debating whether they were seeing a cosmic glitch or the first real sign of a split. Slack channels and internal emails from that night read like a rapid-fire relay. Possible fragment? Confirm ASAP. Rerunning pipeline needs second eye. Confirmation didn't come from a single source. By sunrise, independent teams at the Very Large Telescope in Chile and NASA's scout system had each flagged the same anomaly. The new object wasn't just a stray pixel or a camera artifact. It tracked along nearly the same hyperbolic path as Atlas, trailing by less than a tenth of a degree. The MPC's central log shows a flurry of urgent entries, each one time-stamped between July 28th and July 30th, as groups scrambled to lock down the coordinates. The offset, barely measurable at first, held steady across three consecutive exposures. The pressure was immediate, with 3I slash Atlas only 1.4 astronomical units from Mars, and the window for high-resolution imaging closing fast, every telescope with a clear line of sight was called into action. Observatory directors debated whether to bump scheduled targets for what could be a once-in-a-generation interstellar split. Some teams hesitated, wary of chasing a false positive, but the risk of missing the event was too great. Within 72 hours, a global network of ground-based and orbital instruments was pointed at the same patch of sky, each trying to capture the fragment before it drifted out of range. For the astronomers at the front lines, the MPC analysts, the ZTF operators, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter engineers, this was more than just another night shift. Internal logs describe sleepless hours, last-minute instrument retasks, and a sense of personal responsibility to catch whatever was unfolding. The data, when stitched together, showed a second object moving in lockstep with Atlas, its faint signal just clear enough to suggest a real, physical body. The science teams knew they were witnessing something rare. Not since Shoemaker-Levy 9 had a cometary split offered such a direct, observable record. And this time, the object wasn't just from the outer solar system. It was an interstellar visitor, caught in the act near Mars. Comet fragmentation isn't new to science, but the circumstances unfolding near Mars are anything but routine. In the solar system, splits like this are rare and usually triggered by intense forces, solar heating, tidal stresses, or sudden outbursts from deep inside a comet's core. Most of the time, these events happen close to the sun, where temperatures soar and internal pressure builds until the nucleus can't hold together. But 3I slash Atlas is not only far from the Sun, hovering just inside Mars's orbit at 1.4 astronomical units. It's also an interstellar visitor, something we've only seen twice before. When astronomers think about comet breakups, Shoemaker-Levy 9 stands out as the textbook example. In 92, that comet got too close to Jupiter and was ripped into 21 fragments by the planet's gravity. Each piece followed a slightly different path, eventually raining down on Jupiter's clouds in a display that changed how we think about planetary impacts. The images, chains of glowing fireballs, scars stretching across Jupiter's face, still circulate in every planetary science classroom. But Shoemaker-Levy 9 started as a solar system comet, and its fragmentation was driven by a close encounter with a giant planet. Atlas, by contrast, is on a hyperbolic trajectory, moving at nearly 60 kilometers per second, and its closest approach is to Mars, 
a much smaller world with a far weaker gravitational pull. That's why the detection of a potential split at this distance is so extraordinary. There's no obvious tidal force to blame. And the thermal environment near Mars is far milder than the furnace conditions comets face near the Sun. Mission planners tracking Mars orbiters have taken notice. Even a small fragment, traveling at interstellar speeds, could pose a hazard to spacecraft or, if its path shifted, potentially to the thin Martian atmosphere itself. With Mars currently about 1.4 astronomical units from Atlas's position, the margin for error is slim, and every new observation is being scrutinized for signs of further breakup or trajectory changes. For planetary scientists and mission engineers, the stakes are clear. A split like this, especially from an object born outside our solar system, offers a window into material and processes we've never directly observed. It's a scientific opportunity, but also a logistical challenge, as every Mars mission now has to factor in the possibility, however remote, of encountering interstellar debris. The last time a comet broke up near a planet, the solar system was left with a set of lessons written across Jupiter's clouds. This time, the story is unfolding near Mars, and the world is watching to see what comes next. Data from the Global Telescope Network began arriving in rapid succession. The first batch of astrometric measurements, logged between July 29th and August 1st, plotted the positions of both the main atlas nucleus and the suspected fragment with remarkable precision. Analysts mapped their paths against the predicted hyperbolic trajectory, checking for any deviation that might hint at non-gravitational forces or sudden outgassing. The orbital solutions, calculated from over 100 observations, showed the two objects maintaining a near-parallel course, yet the fragment's velocity lagged by a fraction of a percent, just enough to prompt further scrutiny. Spectroscopic teams focused on the coma, using Gemini South and the Southern African Large Telescope to scan for gas emissions and dust signatures. The reflectance spectra from July 5th revealed a broad absorption near two microns, consistent with water ice, but no strong bands for carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide. This absence stood out, since earlier JUBS-T observations had flagged Atlas as unusually rich in carbon dioxide compared to other comets. The production rates, while elevated, didn't spike or show the sharp discontinuities typical of fragmentation outbursts. Instead, the dust continuum dominated, indicating a low gas-to-dust ratio and a coma more similar to Jupiter family comets than to the volatile-rich 2E Borisov. Rotation state was another focus. Over a 72-hour window, light curve data from the Nordic Optical Telescope tracked subtle changes in the coma's brightness and color, but failed to reveal any dramatic spin-up or tumbling. The nucleus appeared diffuse and stable, with no evidence of rapid rotation or chaotic movement. This stability puzzled some dynamicists, who had expected a split to leave telltale signs of angular momentum transfer or irregular brightness dips. Instead, the photometric record showed only a gradual reddening and a slight increase in coma diameter, both well within the range of standard cometary evolution as solar heating intensifies. Trajectory residuals, published by the Minor Planet Center, remain tightly clustered around the predicted path. No sudden jumps, no unexplained scatter. If a split had occurred, it left no clear astrometric fingerprint, at least not in the data released so far. The anomaly, then, was less a matter of dramatic deviation and more a puzzle of subtlety. A faint, persistent companion, stable gas and dust signals, and a trajectory that clung to the expected arc. For the scientific teams, this was both a relief and a frustration. The evidence was real, but it refused to fit any of the classic fragmentation profiles. The next step would mean confronting competing theories, each with its own explanation for what the instruments had recorded. August brought a wave of debate that spilled beyond the observatory logs and into the halls of international conferences. The annual planetary science meeting in Vienna, scheduled just days after the second object's detection, became a flashpoint. Avi Loeb and his Harvard group arrived with preprint drafts in hand, arguing that the subtle velocity lag between Atlas and its companion might point to non-gravitational acceleration, something beyond the usual push of outgassing. Their presentation cited the lingering mystery of Oumuamua's unexpected motion and raised the possibility of propulsion-like bursts, perhaps from deeply buried ices venting in ways not seen before. 
Loeb's team called for more aggressive modeling, urging the community not to dismiss the anomaly as mere measurement noise. On the other side, a coalition of comet dynamicists, many with decades of experience tracking solar system fragments, pushed back. Their talks emphasized that Atlas's coma, while dusty and expanding, showed no evidence of the violent jets or rapid spin-up usually associated with catastrophic splits. They pointed to the stable light curves, the lack of sharp photometric dips, and the absence of chaotic tumbling. In their view, the faint companion could be a slow shedding clump, the product of uneven outgassing or a loosely bound aggregate coming apart under mild thermal stress. To them, claims of exotic acceleration were premature, especially with astrometric residuals hugging the predicted path so tightly. The chemistry added fuel to the disagreement. Spectroscopists flagged the high carbon dioxide content and the weak water bands as odd, but not unprecedented. Some theorize that Atlas, having spent eons in interstellar cold, could harbor layers of volatile ices that behave unpredictably when exposed to sunlight. Others worried that the incomplete calibration of the July spectra left too much room for error. One senior investigator, speaking during a closed-door session, cautioned that media attention was outpacing the data and called for patience until JWST and Mars Orbiter results could be fully analyzed. Outside the lecture halls, hallway conversations circled back to the same question. Was this truly a split, or just the latest comet to defy expectations? The only consensus was that the evidence didn't fit neatly into any textbook scenario. As the conference wound down, teams divided into camps, some pushing for urgent telescope time to catch further changes, others insisting on a more measured approach. The debate set the stage for a direct comparison of the competing models, as new data from Mars and the deep space fleet continued to stream in. Interstellar objects have only crossed our solar system a handful of times, at least as far as our telescopes can tell. When Oumuamua was first detected in 2017, it raced through the inner planets with no visible coma, no tell, and no sign of splitting. Its light curve hinted at a strange elongated shape, but every major observatory, Hubble, Spitzer, Pan Stars, reported a single, solitary track. The mystery centered on its acceleration, which did not match the standard models for comet outgassing. Some researchers, including teams at Harvard, proposed that deeply buried ices or even hydrogen outbursts could explain the change in speed. Others pointed to observational limits, suggesting that faint gas emissions might have escaped detection. In the end, Aumuamua left as a single object, its path unbroken, and the debate over its true nature still lingers in scientific circles. The next visitor, 2i slash Borisov, arrived in 2019 and immediately behaved more like a textbook comet. Borisov sprouted a bright coma and a long, dust-rich tail as it neared the sun. Over months of careful observation, astronomers tracked its activity using Hubble, the Very Large Telescope, and dozens of ground-based instruments. Spectra revealed high levels of carbon monoxide and even traces of nickel, features rarely seen in solar system comets. Despite this chemical oddity, Borisov's nucleus held together from start to finish. No secondary object, no evidence of a split, and no abrupt deviation from its hyperbolic course. The comet faded into the background after perihelion, leaving behind a trail of dust and a stack of well-behaved light curves. These two cases set the baseline for what astronomers expect from interstellar visitors. Both objects showed quirks, Oumuamua's acceleration, Borisov's chemistry, but neither fragmented or produced a companion. The astronomical community, drawing on decades of comet studies, generally treats splitting as a rare outcome, usually triggered by powerful forces like tidal stress near a massive planet or rapid heating close to the sun. For most comets, including those from deep space, the journey through the inner solar system is hazardous but not catastrophic. Even when chemical signatures surprise, the physical structure tends to endure. That is why every new interstellar visitor prompts a careful watch, but not an expectation of dramatic breakups. The current debates over Atlas's behavior, then, are shaped by these precedents, reminding researchers that, while anomalies spark excitement, most interstellar bodies pass through quietly, their secrets kept intact. 
NASA's Planetary Defense Office and the European Space Agency's coordination teams are watching 3i slash Atlas with more than just scientific curiosity. When a potential fragment appears near Mars, every mission planner has to consider what even a tiny piece of interstellar debris could mean for spacecraft in orbit or on the surface. Internal NASA memos from August lay out the challenge. If a split fragment's course wobbles by just a fraction of a degree, it could intersect with the path of a probe, or, in a more remote scenario, graze Mars's upper atmosphere. The risk isn't just theoretical. Mars hosts a growing fleet of orbiters and landers, and each one depends on precise trajectory forecasts to avoid hazards. The 2025 Planetary Defense Guidelines, set for rollout at the end of the year, now include rapid response simulations for unexpected objects. These protocols require real-time data sharing between agencies, and the ATLAS event is already serving as a test case. ESA's Mars teams, for example, have adjusted their observation priorities, shifting camera windows and spectrometer scans to maximize chances of catching any fragment signatures. NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory has run updated impact probability models, drawing on lessons from Shoemaker-Levy 9, but adapting for interstellar speeds and Martian gravity. What's at stake isn't just a single mission. If a fragment from 3i slash Atlas were to collide with Mars, even as a dust cloud, it could create a new layer of atmospheric particles, potentially altering observations for months. For future Mars landings, planners are already factoring in the possibility of unexpected debris fields. The planetary defense community sees this as a wake-up call, a reminder that interstellar visitors don't just offer scientific puzzles, but real-world challenges for human exploration beyond Earth. The coordination effort is global. NASA, ESA, and partner agencies have moved to streamline their data pipelines, aiming to cut the lag between detection and response. Policy memos circulated in September call for open access to raw astrometric and spectroscopic data during high-interest events, a shift from the more cautious, peer-review-first approach of the past. These changes are designed to ensure that no single team or nation holds the critical piece of information that could affect the safety of billions of dollars worth of hardware or, in the future, human crews. As the debate over Atlas's split continues, the broader stakes are clear. Each new interstellar object challenges not just our scientific understanding, but the systems we rely on to protect our missions and, eventually, our presence on other worlds. On July 1, 2025, astronomers detected a second object trailing 3i slash Atlas near Mars, marking the first suspected interstellar fragmentation event at this distance from the Sun. Unlike Shoemaker-Levy 9, which split before impacting Jupiter in 1994, no prior interstellar visitor, neither one I slash Aumuamua nor two I slash Borisov, has shown clear evidence of splitting. Observations revealed unexpected carbon dioxide levels and a sudden change in spin, as documented in MPC logs and Gemini spectra, but the cause remains under debate among scientific teams. While some suggest natural cometary breakup, others highlight anomalies still unexplained by current models. Despite detailed analysis, there is no consensus on whether the split poses any risk to Mars missions or Earth's planetary defense. What is certain? Every new interstellar arrival brings unanswered questions and drives improvements in global tracking protocols. As we await further peer-reviewed results, the case of 3i slash Atlas stands as a reminder. Deep space remains full of surprises, and continuous observation is our best tool for understanding what comes next.